Welcome to Nated Engineering. In this set of videos, we will be looking at stress, strain, and Young's modulus, engineering science and four. We will start by looking at what is stress. So stress is simply the ratio of the force divided by the area over which it is applied. And that area that we are talking about will be this area right here if the force that is applied is this one so if this force is applied on this cross-sectional area the stress will calculate using this force divided by this area and it is represented by this symbol given by given in pascal that's the SI unit of stress. So whenever we have a force that is acting on a beam, like this one, this, that, like this force right here, we will have a change in length of the beam. So we will have scenarios like this, depending on the type of stress, on the type of force that is applied to the beam. So if we have this kind of a force, which is compressive force, with this one being our original length, since the force is trying to compress uh, the beam, the change in length of the beam will be something like this. You might find that the beam, after the force is applied, the beam's length will no longer be that one, but it will be this one here. So this one, you will say it's the change in length. This change in length will occur as the forces are applied. And we call these forces compressive force. Because they are trying to compress the beam. And then another scenario, we can have a force which will be trying to stretch the beam and we call this force tensile force with this one being our original length from here to here and this one being our change in length So the ratio of the change in length divided by the original length, it's called strain. Uh, and it's given by, let's write it like this, and it's given by, it's represented by this, this symbol, and it's the change in length divided by the original length. And since we will be dealing with information from the same beam, if this is in meters, this will also be in meters. This will cancel this. So strain has no SI unit. And the ratio of strain, of, of the stress, the ratio of stress, let's write it here, the ratio of stress divided by strain we call it Young's modulus. Uh, it's Young's modulus. And then it is given by Pascal. Since the SI unit for, for, for stress is Pascal and strain, we said, doesn't have an SI unit. The, stray, the, 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 young modu the Young's modulus will take the SI unit of, uh, of the stress. So strain. Strain is defined as the change in length per unit length of a material. In this, in this subject, 
we are dealing with two types of stress which is the direct stress direct stress and direct stress is caused by the force which is applied directly on the cross-sectional area of the beam like in this case so we have two types of direct stress we have the stress that is caused by the compressive force and we have the stress that is caused by the, tens the, the tensile force the stress that is caused by the compressive force we will call it compressive stress and then for tensile we will say it's a tensile stress those are the two the two types of stress that fall under direct stress remember direct stress how do you see direct stress it's the stress that is it's the stress that is caused by a force that is applied directly to the cross-sectional area of a beam so the next stress that we are dealing with let me erase this it's what we call shear stress Shear stress is represented by this symbol and it is also given by the force divided by area. So the difference between shear stress and direct stress is that shear stress is associated with sliding motion. Let's say we have, let me erase this. Let's say we have two plates that are joined together by a nail. Let me get a new marker. And we have forces that are applied in those directions. We know that if the forces are, are greater, they will cause this nail to share in this position. That's why, that's why we say it's a shear stress so the cross-sectional area that we'll be dealing with in this in this uh, case since we are focusing on the nail will be the cross-sectional area in this in this position which is where our nail will share and then the area will be given by pi divided by 4 d squared this is the area that you will put here. The force will be these forces. And then let's look at another scenario for shear stress. Let's say you are having an object. Assume this object is not moving and we apply a force in that direction. We also apply another force in that direction. We said shear stress is associated with sliding. So if these two forces are strong enough, they will cause this object to share in this position. So if we have a cross-sectional area like this, where our object will share, we, we know that this the area for this one will be length which will be length times breadth length times breadth this is what you will put here but let's say now we are having an object and then we apply something like this is pushed down we know that if this force is strong enough assume this thing is not moving this beam will share in these two positions will share in this position and then will also share in this position at the end we will have a piece that is like this coming out of this object so now when you get to the now when you get to the area we know that this the the, the cross-sectional will be length times spread we know that we know how to calculate the area but now because we have two places where this object share when you get to the area you will now have to say times two the area because it has shared in two places and that's how we go about calculating the shear stress 
of this particular scenario. Let's go to another scenario where we now have a plate. of thickness t and then we want to drill a hole here we know an object like this will come out of at the end so when we want to calculate the shear stress of this one we will say pi at the area will be pi d which will be this radius which which will be the diameter of this hole and then we say times the thickness so this will be the area in this case we will take this area we will use it here pi d uh, pi dt and that's how we go about calculating for the the shear stress and then the strain of or the strain of a, a shear force is now given by it's now represented by this formula and is it is given by still the change in length divided by length and then the young modulus it's given by g and then since we know that the young modulus it's the ratio of the stress divided by the strain the stress we know that it is given by this uh, it represent is represented by this symbol and the strain is represented by this but still in pascal so nothing nothing is changing here this is just to represent that the young's modulus that you are calculating for here is the young modulus of a shear stress and the strain it's just to represent that the strain that you are calculating here is the strain of a shear stress nothing is changing so that's where we will leave our lesson see you on the next lesson